Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. This series of videos will go through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 diagnostic information queries. These queries are available for free at glennsqlperformance.com resources. In this video, we're going to cover query four, which is configuration values. This query lets you see the instance level configuration values for the current instance. This query reads from the sys.configurations catalog view, and it shows instance level settings that you can change with the SP configure system store procedure. The documentation for sys.configurations is available right here. Let's run this query and see what information that it actually returns. All right, so now you can see as we scroll down that it returns 85 rows of data for SQL Server 2019. Older versions of SQL Server will have fewer rows. In most cases, the value and the value in use column will be identical. One reason that they would be different is if someone had changed the value and didn't run the reconfigure or reconfigure with override command. Another reason that those two columns could be different is if the setting was not a dynamic setting, which means that SQL Server must be restarted before the change actually goes into effect. Next, let's take a look at some of the more important configuration settings. These include backup checksum default, backup compression default, cost threshold for parallelism, max degree of parallelism, max server memory in megabytes, optimize for ad hoc workloads, and remote admin connections. The first setting is backup checksum default. And all this does is at the instance level, it adds the checksum option to your T-SQL backup commands. And that just helps protect you in case somebody forgets to do that. And running backup checksums is a good idea in my opinion. The next important setting is backup compression default. And all this does is enable compression of backups by default at the instance level. It adds the compression option to your backup commands. And I think backup compression is a good idea in most circumstances. The times you wouldn't want to use backup compression is if you're under sustained CPU pressure and you can't afford the extra CPU to run backup compression, but that's really not very common. Another reason you might not want to run backup compression is if you have extremely fast storage. So it's so fast that the extra overhead from compressing the backup slows down the backup process. And that's not a very common scenario to be honest. Backup compression is generally a good idea and I think it's a good idea to turn this option on. Our next important setting is cost threshold for parallelism. And this setting controls how expensive a query has to be before it gets parallelized. And the default value for this is five. And for many workloads, that is too low. But before you just change it to some higher value based on somebody's blog post, for example, you should run some queries to figure out how expensive your queries actually are for your workload. And then after you've done that analysis, then you might wanna change it depending on your workload. Our next setting is max server memory in megabytes. And this setting controls at a high level how much memory SQL Server can use, primarily for the SQL Server buffer pool, but also for a few other small things. And you wanna set this at a low enough value so that your operating system is never under memory pressure. That's really important, especially if you've enabled lock pages in memory. And there's lots of resources out on the internet that tell you how to calculate a proper value for this. But the important thing is don't just leave it at the default, especially if you do have lock pages and memory enabled. Another important configuration setting is optimize for ad hoc workloads. And this is a setting that I think should always be enabled. And what it actually does is the first time an ad hoc query is run, it only stores a stub of the execution plan in the plan cache instead of the complete query plan. And then the second time it's run, it actually stores the complete query plan in the plan cache. And having this turned on helps reduce your plan cache bloating a little bit, but it does not completely solve the issue. But there's really no downside to having this turned on in my opinion. And a new feature in SQL Server 2019, by the way, is that you can control this at the database level with a database scope configuration option. So instead of just turning this on or off at the instance level, you can control it at the database level. And what you do at the database level will override this setting. The final setting I'm going to talk about for this video is remote admin connections. And this just enables the dedicated admin connection for this instance. And that'll let you get into SQL Server if you can't connect normally. So this might save you in a crisis situation. 
This is Glenn Berry, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.